Hello, everyone, and welcome to another race recap analysis. And this time it is of the Olympics, the 2021 or Tokyo 2020, if you will. And we saw the first ever Ecuadorian take a medal, the gold medal in the road race and only the second ever gold medal for Ecuador as a nation at the Summer Olympics. But anyways, as always, I'm joined by Mr. Critical himself, Ewan. And Ewan, how exactly did Richard Carapaz win the gold Ecuador. Well, Richard Carapaz rode a fairly anonymous race for a lot of this course. He was riding alongside Honoton Narvaez of Ineos Grenadiers for a lot of this, and they just stayed in the bunch, cruising on from the effort done by Italy, Belgium, and Poland, who controlled a lot of the race for the first half of the day. Later on, once we went up the Ninkuni Pass, things started to light up, attacks went, and all of a sudden, Tadej Pogacar flew off the front, breaking up the climbers from that main group. Richard Carapaz followed the moves, and eventually he and Brandon McNulty made a decisive move over the Kagasaka Pass, which meant that they were out on their own with a substantial lead. No one reacted behind, not well for not, 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 not Tadej Pagacha, and that allowed Richard Carapaz to just go off on his own. Him and McNulty took on the descent towards the finish line together with a gap of roughly 30, 40 seconds. However, that gap went down to 15 seconds before Carapaz attacked McNulty. McNulty was dropped and Carapaz soloed to the line whilst the group all looked at each other. And in that group, it was Tadej Pogaccia who got bronze and while Fernand silver, whilst Richard Carapaz gets just Ecuador's second gold medal after Jefferson Perez in the 1996 Olympics at the speedwalking event. So this is a fantastic day for Ecuador, finally getting Olympic success again. And it's good news for Ineos Grenadiers. They've got an Olympic champion within their ranks again. So first of all, Richard Carapaz, as you said, amazing win from him. Where do you rank this victory amongst his own victory so far? As we know, he's the first ever Ecuadorian to podium all the three Grand Tours, podium even at Grand Tour, win a Grand Tour. And of course, he became the first Ecuadorian to even attend the Tour de France last year. So a lot of firsts for Richard Carapaz. But where would you put this amongst his wins from winning the Tour de Suisse to winning the Giro d'Italia in 2019. I think this is a very different win because it's the Olympic Games. He rides for his country, Ecuador, instead of a trade team like Movistar, Ineos, like his other wins. And this is on a very, very different stage as well. And the Olympic Games, nothing compares to it. They don't call it the greatest show on earth for no reason. It's got so many viewers. The span of it is incredible. And ordinary people will, will remember Richard Carapaz for his Olympic gold medal more than a Giro d'Italia win, though. However, I think that the romantics around cycling will probably say that Giro win is the, is the biggest one in his Palmares. But in terms of his career, salary, and all that kind of stuff, the Olympic Games and being Olympic champion is huge for his career and uh, his Palmares going forward. And definitely Richard Carapaz is amongst one of the greats in the peloton now with, with this victory. So anyways, of course, we had a very exciting finish for the second place. We had a sprint between the Tour de France champion and, of course, the winner of the last two stages of the Tour de France, which of course was Wout van Aert of Belgium. And those two were, of course, the two pre-race favorites. So if it wasn't for Richard Carapaz, we would have had down to the wire finish between these two. But uh, Wout van Aert, of course, had one of his strongest teams. We saw Belgium break the race up. And do you think Belgium played this wrong? And do you think Wout van Aert should have marked Carapaz more and not just let him up the road? I think Wout van Aert had a problem here when he came into that final selection in the group he could have jumped on but everyone would have followed him and it would have been a stalemate until someone who wasn't him or Tadej Pogacar attacked but while for not being the most marked rider in that group did pose its difficulties he had to he had to lead out the sprint going into the line he was sort of lent against to do the the pace working duties but while for not with a silver medal here it's still a big achievement for him Belgium didn't get gold, but I think Carapaz on the day, just the way he tactically roll, rolled the dice was a lot stronger than anything Wout van Aert was going to bring to the table. Which team disappointed you the most? We saw Italy were quite strong in the beginning of the race and Alberto Bettiol looked like he was doing well, but then kind of fell through in a way. Yeah, Bettiol cramping or having a mechanical between the two climbs really broke my heart because I thought Bettiol really had his chance to do well. In the end, didn't quite work out. Uh, finished in a similar group to Gianni Moscon and Italy really bossed up this race going into the Mikuni Pass. And it looked like Bettiol was reacting to every single move apart from that big Carapaz one. But then it just it just all came clattering down in the end. And it's a shame because Italy, I think, really deserved a good result here. They brought a fantastic team. They worked very well throughout the day. It's just 
poor luck with Betty All in the end that, that took them away from a top five. And of course, will Tyler Bogaccia be happy with this bronze medal? Well, he is already the Tour de France champion. So will this bronze medal give him any pleasure in a way? I think Tyler Bogaccia is going to be happy with this. It's a bronze medal still at an Olympic Games. It's a big achievement for him. And for Slovenia as well, they don't get many medals. So this gives them the chance to really bring something to the table in the Olympic Games. And Pagaccia, he just won a Tour de France. I think that probably speaks more volumes than an Olympic gold medal, if I'm honest. But he will live on and probably have to wait another seven years for another chance when we're in LA, potentially, for an Olympic gold. So anyways, that's basically it for this. A quick recap of the Olympic road race. Of course, congratulations to Richard Carapaz and Ecuador taking their second ever gold medal as a nation so we look forward to the time trial and of course make sure to join us for that and check out the preview that's coming up as well on the channel thank you as always for watching and have a nice day